and say yes. Most of us see the negative aspects, yet it's intriguing to notice that the majority still maintains active accounts on platforms like Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok. This paradox begs the question, why do we persist in using social media, despite being aware of its potential dangers or drawbacks? Social media is like a toxic ex that just won't leave you alone. The statistics are staggering. The average person spends three hours a day, every single day, in social media. That's 1,095 hours per year, which is essentially one and a half months of the year. If we do the maths, assuming the average lifespan of 80 years, we're looking at wasting eight and a half years of our lives just scrolling through feeds and swiping through stories. Now, don't get me wrong, there have been some wonderful things that social media has brought into our lives. It has significantly improved communication, enabled worldwide connection, and the formation of new educational resources and communities. However, what we often have to look is the flip side of that coin. Take, for instance, the simple act of tagging someone in a photo. It seems innocent enough, doesn't it? Yet, why doesn't the notification of you being tagged in a photo also already contain the said photo? It's actually very simple to entice the users back into the app by digging deeper into their personalities. Whenever we receive such notifications, it triggers a dopamine response in our brains, which is associated with pleasure and reward. This response encourages us to engage with the platforms more frequently, capturing us in a perpetual cycle of digital engagement. Gen Z is the first generation to have grown up with mobile devices from early childhood. Raised in the digital age, we are less inclined to take risks, less adept at navigating global challenges. At the slightest discomfort or uncertainty, our generation reaches our social media as a sort of digital pacifier, showcasing our generation's dependence on technology as a sort of coping. Now, this is the moment where I must call myself out since I have been a quote-unquote iPad kid from the age of five years old with my earliest memories often centered around digital crisis. Yet, despite my inbred reliance, a year ago I started my journey towards reclaiming control of my digital life. I first deleted social media, influenced by a trend among my friends and peers. It seemed like a logical step towards more balance and a more mindful existence. However, despite feeling liberated initially, I felt compelled to return to the world I had left behind. I still I vividly really remember how I used to rationalize that a quick scroll from Instagram, just to see what people were up to, would do no harm. However, before I knew it, I was re-downloading the very apps I had ceremoniously cast aside. Consequently, my screen time has skyrocketed to alarming levels, sometimes to be reaching a staggering seven hours per day. The irony was not lost on me. My attempt at liberating myself from the handcuffs of social media has only resulted in a deeper engagement. As a result, in line with this, my mental well-being was deteriorating. The more time I spent watching someone else's seemingly perfect life unfold, the worse I felt about my own. I was trapped in this vicious cycle of mindless scrolling, where feeling bad led to more time in bed, and more time in bed would only worsen the feelings of inferiority. Recognizing the detrimental impact this cycle was having on, on my life, I resolved to take decisive action, and around November, I once again tried to put in social media. However, this time, this time I approached it with a new sense of caution and awareness. This time, I realized that perhaps total abstinence was not possible anymore, but there is a way to practice safe social. The YouTube tutorials and motivational videos that I stumbled upon seemed undeniably effective. However, their recommendations were far too extreme for my life. For instance, one tutorial supported an immediate purge of all apps, leaving only essential ones like messages, phone, and photos. This drastic step felt overwhelming and totally impractical to me. I knew that such tactics would leave me more attached to social media, since that's exactly what happened the previous time. Also, personally, I couldn't justify deleting apps that I sometimes derive enjoyment from that don't significantly impact my screen time, like perhaps Spotify. The sole thought of enjoying a long subway ride in total silence is simply more than I could bear. This is also why, rather than a drastic splurge, I opted for a more gradual approach. My goal this time was not to quit all social media, but to start using it more like a grandparent than a night. Now, if you find yourself
yourself in a similar situation, seeking to break free from the chains of social media, then allow me to offer you some guidance. There are three simple steps to social media wellness. Recognizing the problem is the first step to fixing it. This is why curating this talk right now is just that. It's the first step. We all know the power of suggestion. Once someone tells you about something, you start seeing it everywhere. This is why awareness is key. Secondly, go on a social media diet. The same way we monitor what goes into our mouths, what we eat. The same way we should monitor what goes into our brains and into our hearts. Ask yourself, did that scroll make me feel better or worse about my life? Do I feel emotionally exhausted or drained after spending a longer period of time on social media? And then, ask yourself if you're happy with the results. Because you may be happy, and that's totally okay. However, if you are not, then you should want to step free, which is developing a healthy relationship with social media. What this means is to consciously set boundaries or guidelines for your social media usage. Start by identifying triggers that lead to negative feelings or negative emotions. And once identified, try to reduce these triggers by developing certain strategies. For instance, from personal experience, I've discovered that implementing strict time controls Utilizing a grayscale screen and activating night mode around the clock can frequently be very effective. Moreover, I have recently stumbled upon an app called Opal, which directly helps you limit your screen time. Essentially, how it works is it lets you set these screen free sessions during which your access to the most distracting apps is limited, helping you to maintain your focus. However, it is also important to note that whatever works for me may not necessarily work for you. Which is why I encourage you to work with strategies that do align with your own needs. What I want to leave you with is the question, is social media harming your mental health? And the answer is, it doesn't necessarily have to. But if we spend these two or three hours a day on social media, then I would want my experiences to be of laughs, motivation, inspiration. And if that time is not spent that way, then it's time for a change. It's time to disconnect, to reconnect.